Nice to see so many of you here. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the opening ceremony of Asian Heritage Month 2022. We are grateful to you all for joining from across Canada and other parts of the world. Indeed, today is very special. We are also celebrating the 20th anniversary of the signing of Asian Heritage Month Declaration by the Senate of Canada. To mark this significant occasion, we are honored to have with us today the Honorable Dr. Vivian Poy, former Senator who tabled the motion in the Senate of Canada. And also His Worship John Tory, Mayor, City of Toronto, and Mr. Justin Poy, the Honorable Patron of Asian Heritage Month, the Canadian Foundation for Asian Culture. Let us begin the opening ceremony with the land acknowledgement. When the opening ceremony is in person, we used to do it in the Toronto City Hall or the Metro Hall. So I'm reading out the land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the credit. The Anishban, the Chippewa, the Khodan Oshani, and the Wendek peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Metis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Next, we would like to take a group photo, a screenshot, of course of the official party to mark the 20th anniversary of the sign of the Asian Heritage Month Declaration. Please smile while we take the photo. This will take about 15 seconds to make sure that the photo taken uh, is well. So keep smiling, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for smiling for the photo taking. We usually have our Asian Heritage Month photo and art exhibition at the City Hall Rotunda. Right at the Rotunda is an Asian Heritage Month proclamation by the Mayor of Toronto. We are truly grateful to Mayor John Tory for his continuous support for Asian Heritage Month. Today, His Worship is joining us and bringing greetings from the city. Mayor Tory, please. Uh, Mayor, you have to turn on your mic. There we go. No, I just had to wait for the, uh, for the, yeah, uh, yeah. the uh, opportunity to do that, to come up on the screen. Good uh -huh. afternoon, Stephen, and thank you very much. And uh, I'm so proud and pleased to be here in the presence of uh, Vivian Poy, uh, Dr. Poy, uh, who, uh, you know, was responsible for the fact that we're here today celebrating 20 years uh, since uh, the Senate approved the uh, holding of Air Asian Heritage Month each month, and I'll talk each year rather, and I'll talk about why that's so important in just a moment, but I'm also happy to be here with Justin Poy and with you, Stephen. Um, you are uh, one of our most respected uh, Asian Canadian leaders and a, a respected uh, Canadian leader in all respects, and uh, so I just am very pleased to be here with you as well. I, uh, and I want to thank the Foundation for uh, Asian uh, Culture for hosting this wonderful event. I'm very proud uh, to be the mayor of a city that is uh, acknowledged by many to be the most diverse city in the world. Uh, but of course, the fact that Toronto is uh, the most diverse city in the world is just a fact. Uh, the goal uh, is for us to become the most inclusive, the most welcoming, the most embracing uh, city in the world where everybody can feel comfortable uh, living. And I think we've done well uh, at that, but, uh, you know, we, we still do. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is, because, um, you know, while we're admired around the world for the fact that we've brought people together, that they live together, celebrate each other's special occasions, learn about each other's histories, uh, understand each other, embrace each other, um, there's still, you know, more tension than there should be, uh, even between and among the different groups uh, in, who live in our city and in our country, um, including those of Asian uh, background. Uh, I, um, 
I think the the people often ask me, why do we have these heritage months? You know, because a lot of the different groups and cultures and, and faiths have heritage months. And that is because of something that uh, Stephen said a little while ago, which is that it is absolutely crucial when you live in a city or a country that is as diverse as ours, that you learn about the people you live with. When you have a situation, a, a proud, blessed fact, like that 51% of the people who live in the city of Toronto, a city of 3 million people, were born outside of the country. That is a, is a blessing, but it also places a special responsibility on us to learn about the people we live with, to learn about the perspectives and, and the backgrounds they bring to our city, to learn how those perspectives and backgrounds can add to the city, how we can celebrate the differences, how we can mark each other's special occasions, how we can understand the history. You know, history shaped the people who we are, no matter where our history took place. And once people move from Asia or from Europe or from South America to Toronto, they bring their histories with them. And those histories then become part of our history. So that's a good reason why we all need to understand each other's history so that we can learn from each other, celebrate our differences, benefit from our differences, and use that learning as an opportunity to diminish uh, the number of, of differences of another kind that take place. And that brings me to anti-Asian racism. You know, it is a fact, it is a, a sad fact that not only does anti-Asian racism continue to be prevalent uh, in our city and in our country, but in fact, the incidence of anti-Asian racism has been in the last couple of years. That's borne out by the reports, one just issued last week by the Toronto Police Service, for example. And again, the best antidote to that anti-Asian racism is going to be education, because a lot of it is based on misinformation, misunderstanding, myths, uh, bad negative narratives that are circulated by others who are people that are not to be listened to, but sometimes theirs is the only voice, especially through social media, that people hear. And so one of the things that we're working on, and I'm, I'm expecting a report very soon in the next uh, three or four weeks from an anti-Asian uh, racism roundtable that I established in the city of Toronto, consisting mainly of people from the community, not politicians, so that they could give us advice on how we could go about uh, furthering the education of people about uh, Asians, Asian Canadians, about the Asian community presence in our midst, which has been such a positive thing and has made so many contributions to our well-being. And I think that report is going to be the first step on the way uh, to us embarking a lot on education, to some extent on strengthening the laws, and to some extent on perhaps th strengthening the vigilance that the police and others show uh, when it comes to identifying acts of anti-Asian racism. It's also going to be important we make people feel more comfortable reporting those acts because right now a lot of them go unreported. But I will just tell you as mayor, I've heard about people being abused on the subway, people being abused in the street, um, and other things that have happened like that that are blatant acts of hatred and discrimination, which there's no place for uh, in the city of Toronto. And especially when it comes, there's no place for it, no matter who it involves. But I can tell you when it involves a community that is making so many positive contributions, uh, as are the members of our Asian Canadian communities in, in Toronto, then that just makes it all the more uh, obviously that these acts are the result of, of terrible misunderstanding because um, they, they, they have no place in any event, but they especially have no place uh, when it comes to people who are making so many positive contributions. So I urge Torontonians, I urge Canadians, to take a minute or an hour or a day in Heritage Month to learn about some of our Asian neighbors and co-workers and fellow uh, Canadians. And to, by learning about that history, you will, you will make yourself more aware of our collective history. You will make yourself aware of, of, of the kind of situation that is faced by some of our Asian uh, fellow, fellow Canadians uh, in facing discrimination and racism. And you can be among those that are allies with this community, as we all must be. Uh, in making sure it gets eliminated and that in fact we celebrate not only the great heritage of Asians and of Asian Canadians, but the uh, incredible contribution they are making to the well-being of our own country and our own city uh, right here, right now. And that has been the case for a long, long time, but it continues today more so than ever before. So again, I thank the Foundation for uh, once again taking the leadership to make sure this month happens. Uh, and, and you've kept it going through the pandemic, and I credit you for that. I thank uh, Senator Poy for having the uh, foresight to introduce the resolution that led to Asian Heritage Month. And I thank all those, including Justin and Steve, who are so much involved in making it a reality each and every year, including this year, 2022. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Tory, for your significant message.